the major areas of problems in people's lives are money, love, hmm? money, love, hmm? and guilt. Those are the three major areas. Now, those three major areas have <coughs> so many divisions. All right. Money economics. So you could have so many different kinds of problems in that sphere of economics. Over there, the shares are dropping. Fine. The, the dollar has dropped. Hmm? The South African rand has gone to blazes. Then the great problem of love comes about. All people in this world want to love and be loved. That is the basic desire in everyone. It comes to you from childhood. Since you were born, it has been there. Hmm? Because as when you are born, the mother loves you so much, which she should, right? And as you grow up, the love is extended more and more, right? And then you have friends, and you find that companionship and then love with your friends, okay? And then when the boy grows of a certain age, the father takes him with for fishing, which is an expression of love, <coughs> hmm? and things like that. So, that is a problematic area for people, hmm? because there lies, as in economics, there lies the non-fulfillment. They get afraid to lose the love of the spouse. Fear develops. Now, with this fear, all kinds of thoughts start running through your mind. Hmm? You could become extremely, extremely jealous. Hmm? Right. Because of that, you could have a nervous breakdown. Hmm? You can go through neurosis, psychosis, and all those connected with it. So <coughs> many problems. I just mentioned jealousy. There could be something called compatibility, incompatibility. <coughs> there is no such word in my dictionary. There's no such thing as incompatibility. There is such a thing as misunderstanding, yes, hmm? misunderstanding, but not incompatibility. Hmm? People <coughs> talk of incompatibilities, uh, referring mostly to sex. Hmm? That's a, quite a large area. <coughs> hmm? It is a large area. Hmm. The whole universe has come about through compatibility between the various forces that constitutes nature and the universe. Elements. They might seem opposing to each other, but they're compatible to each other. Hmm? So there's compatibility throughout the universe. It is only the human mind thinks that the two people are incompatible. Problem. One also finds things like non-support because they are dependent. Hmm? And yet everyone can be totally independent. Hmm? Hmm? So one brings about the other, and the other brings about the other, until it becomes so, so big that you can't even face yourself. And that 
is a very big problem. I found in my experience with travels around the world, traveling around the world, that 90 people, 90 percent of people that do practices, our practices, have not come to me to find God. Hmm? They come to me because of the problems in life. So they come with problems and as they are solved slowly with proper explanations, not like we psychoanalysts, you know, they know nothing of the mind. We go deeper than the mind itself, into the very core of the heart. Psychologists haven't reached that stage yet. One day they will, Hope, hopefully. Yes. Then we come to the problem of guilt, which is the greatest disease in the world. The greatest problem I have is how to rid the guilt that is in people's minds. They have done something wrong. Hmm? There has been no saint who had not been a sinner. And there is no sinner who cannot become a saint. The things we have done in life, that's another large area. Hmm? Things that might have happened uh, when you were 16 years old and now you are 36 or 46 or whatever the case might be. But that happening, that happened at the age of 16, hmm? it's still working on your mind. Hmm? So to forget and to forgive, uh, not others but oneself, because the guilt is within yourself then only can that problem be dealt with and got rid of. The first thing I said was that with every problem there is a solution. The solution is built in. And after explaining him the various details of things and this, that and the other and telling him that uh, it's not the size or the shape, you know, that matters, but uh, the technique to a certain extent, and this plays a small part, the technique to a certain extent, but the most important part is this, that you fill your day with expectation. <coughs> that tonight I'm going to reach home and I'm going to do this and that and that. <laughs> <laughs> so he has committed the act already throughout the day. No wonder he couldn't do anything at night. <laughs> yes, sir. So explain to him that the flow between man and wife must become naturally. It's a flow. It's not something you plan. Hmm? It must just be a flow. What's wrong with the living room carpet, for example? <laughs> Nothing wrong. Nothing. No. You're in so much, you're in so much ecstasy, you don't feel the hurt. <laughs> right. So I explained all these things to him, and a plus many, many more things. Um, for example, if you, I mean, you don't time these things. If you time it, then it's not a flow. Right. But just to use as an example, you're going to have relations, make love with your wife at 10 o'clock. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, um, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, okay, it doesn't matter. Depends if you, on what shift he is. He might be a night shift, you know, or he might have to get up 4 o'clock in the morning to reach his job. 
<laughs> but nevertheless, time doesn't matter because these things are, are in reality timeless. And it produces a sense of timelessness in you when you are in that vast orgasm where even time explodes as you are exploding. <laughs> that sounds like dangerous. <laughs> so, I, I asked him, I asked him what time, I asked him what time do you reach home from work? He says, oh, around about half past five. So I said, well, that is the time when you reach home, you start making love. You hold your wife close to you, you kiss her, you joke, you fondle you, while well, she's still busy preparing the dinner. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Right. So, her hand on the stove <laughs> no, 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 you put the stove off. <laughs> right. So you start from there hmm, until 12 o'clock. Okay, you start from there and you know that loving cuddle and kiss and this, that. And um, a woman loves it. While she's busy, you're talking of stoves. While, <laughs> while she's busy at the stove, you know, stirring her pot <laughs> or pan. Uh, she's stirring. She she's stirring her pot or pan. She so says, while the wifey is stirring her pot or pan, you start stirring something else by hugging her around her belly and kissing the neck. Now I'm going to show you which part of the neck is the best to kiss the most erotic zone. Yes, sir. And then playfully you have, you know, your dinner and a glass of wine with it if you drink, whatever. And then of course uh, you can always jump into the shower too. Yeah, hot up too. And it's very pleasant. She rubs your back and you rub her back. And then you go to bed uh, and just think of Guru Raj. <laughs> now, <laughs> the message is this, to be totally natural. Be totally natural. Don't try anything. Just be natural, normal. Just be. Hmm? If there are no little kids in the house, and no one, there's nothing wrong with both of you running around the house naked and chasing each other around the city. <laughs> What's wrong with it? That's all the fun of it. <laughs> Uh, Vidya, you better move your chair. <laughs> I'm not only a guru that imparts mm. divine wisdom to you, hmm? I impart guru shakti to you, I impart peace to your minds, but I can also laugh with you, make you laugh, and I can cry <clears> with <throat> you and make you cry for your own benefit. Good.